So we go from Buster Keaton to heavy metal. Oh. How did you end up into that project? I don't really know, actually. Um, Ivan? Huh? Was it Ivan? Well, well, yeah, obviously Ivan Wright. Um, first of all, it was a Canadian film. Mm -hmm. Ivan, had, it was Ivan's baby, I think he, he loved that, the material. I didn't know much about heavy metal except I had seen a few of the magazines and the, you know, the, some of the artwork was extraordinary. <coughs> and um, they, for the reasons of the, of the contract and the tax shelter deal and all the rest of it, they had to have a Canadian director. And tell by my accent I'm 100% Canadian but I have lived here for 50 years so over 50 years so um, he I think he spoke to my old partner Murray about me and Murray must have been a, put in a good word for when we had our company together and had you ever done a project that large before um, that was when did we do that 1980 Mm -hmm. Well, I'd worked on a film well, when Dan was in L.A. for 20th Century Fox, Raggedy Ann, Raggedy Ann and Andy, that was for 20th Century, which had been directed by Richard Williams, and I was the uh, associate director. That was, a, that was a big project. Not quite like heavy metal, though, because of the, the, the heavy metal was such a compendium of different stories, different ideas, different... Techniques. And it's become so so iconic. When I told people yeah. that I was interviewing you, they yeah. it's almost a hundred percent of them knew the movie. And yeah, it's, it's amazing. Well, the amazing thing is that you know, thirty years ago, well, I started in late '79, and in my apartment in Montreal, actually, that's where we actually got cracking, and that we finished it. The premiere was in July 1981 mm -hmm. in in Manhattan. And um, it was just two and a half years of solid whacking away, and it was a, we got it done very quickly actually. So the main the main film was made in twelve months. Did you ever expect the kind of response that it had? Well, we knew we were working on something special, mm -hmm. I think, you know. And we were all kind of we liked it, you know. We liked what we were doing. It seemed I I liked that when I first met with Ivan. And I think I remember saying to him, I wouldn't have been so sure if it was just one script, one story. But I really like the idea of different, you know, half a different, different stories in one film. I like those kind of movies. I enjoy, you know, when you've got three or four different stories in one yeah. movie. Did you play a big role in the casting? Because the cast was, was really, I mean, you, the whole SCTV gang was in well, there. Well, that was certainly, you know, a lot to do with... Uh, Ivan's previous uh, thing, and I think the you know his, his uh, mixture with those guys like Bill Murray because he'd already you yeah. know he was doing Stripes and he'd already done Caddyshack. Get it, yeah, was that later? I can't remember. And he'd done Animal House too, I think. Yeah, Meatballs was it? Or? Yeah, Meatballs. Did, yeah. So he was a busy boy. In fact, when he was producing Heavy Metal, he was off with a bad case of the flu. I thought in the shooting Stripes mm -hmm. in Czechoslovakia, which is pretty amazing. But I, well, as far as casting was concerned, the main, I think the main person I cast was a, a, an actor who played Harry Canyon, in, uh, which is one of my favorite segments in the film, actually. And uh, a great guy called, um, well, I think Dan knew him, uh, what's his name? Oh, God. Sort of, a, sort of an Italian, Italian name. Anyway, I saw him one night when I was in Hollywood, and we were doing some, we were doing some sound recordings on other bits of the movie. And I saw this guy on a TV film, and he was remarkable. And I thought, wow, that's Harry Canyon. And uh, I happened to see him next day in the drugstore. And I, I said, that's a good story. Yeah, it's true. Yeah, and he said. Um, <coughs> That was his that's, that's when you know it's meant to be. Yeah. yeah. And I said, I saw you on the TV last night when you shot that point blank. It bowled me over. It was so, so massively violent. 
and uh, you were really a bad guy and he laughed because he seemed like a pretty sweet guy actually and I told him that we were doing this film and cab driver you're a real tough guy and he said oh sure I'll do it and uh, he came along now you had a very large animation team for that project oh, right? it was huge yeah. and it wasn't just one local no we had one main studio in Montreal a lot of the We had an outfit in work in London, uh, in Ottawa, <laughs> Vic Atkinson. You know, they did Harry Canyon and um, Gremlins, you know, the B-17 thing, mm -hmm. which they did a great job on. Of course, I'm an aviation freak, so I, uh, I was, you know, I just love being involved with that film. And, uh, you know, I was jumping around, going to L.A. and New York. We had some people doing stuff there in Ottawa. and. Um, in London, I mean, it was a busy time, and quite exhausting, really. Was there a lot of challenges with, because heavy metal was more of a, a traditional storyline, a lot of dialogue, compared to some of the other animation that you've done, which is a lot less dialogue. Yeah, yeah, well, I, I, I sort of like, I kind of like, quite like dialogue. In fact, a couple of things I've done, people say, well, there's so much talk in it. And I suppose it's because I talk too much anyway. Just go on and on and on. What? No, I'm thinking of Rainbow Boys. Yeah, well, well Rainbow Boys, Donald Pleasance, well, that was... I don't remember. 1974. Oh, yeah, that was... <laughs> well, I, I did a film with, with Harold Pinter, called Pinter People, in 1969. And, um, because I'd, I'd read some of his short plays, and, uh, one day, in our company there in Montreal, in Place Bonaventure, I remember wandering downstairs, going to a box shop, and I found this short one-act plays of Harold Pinter, and I thought, wow, this would be great to animate these things. Hmm. And I remember I storyboarded them, a couple of them. I found out his address and everything, and I sent them to him, never heard a thing. And then that summer, I'd already seen uh, Donald Pleasance in a film, in a play called The Caretaker on Broadway. It was, a it, was very, it was very funny. And it was an amazing cast. It was, well, it was written and, was it written, written and directed by Harold with Alan Bates, I think Robert Shaw, and Caretaker. Caretaker. Yeah. And they, they, a movie was made of it. And that winter, that summer in New York, I was there. I went down to try and meet with Harold personally because I heard this movie was running and they were all going to be there mm -hmm. on 8th Street, I think the 8th Street Cinema or whatever it was in the village. <coughs> anyway, go in and sure enough there's Pinter, uh, Pleasance, Robert Shaw all there together. No Alan Bates but I don't know where he was off to. But I, I was sitting in the front row and I saw Robert Shaw and I remember sort of I went like that to him, and he came over and says, yeah, what's, what's up, mate? I said, well, I sent these storyboards to Harold Pinter like three months ago. I never heard a thing. And then he said, oh, well, I'll go and fetch him. And he brought him out, and Pinter came out. This was in the audience, sitting in the front row of this little playhouse. And he came over, and Harold, and Harold said, what's, what's this all about? Then? And, and uh, Robert Shaw said, well, this chap said he sent you these these storyboards he says oh yeah they were terrific yeah let's go let's do those but that's like there's no so he said yeah well i have to i'll get in touch with my agent jimmy wax turned up at this wonderful chap old old chap jimmy wax who actually came eventually and st uh, stayed here a long weekend in fact, we walked up walked up the top of that hill together over there and he said i'd love a nice plate of kippers for breakfast <laughs> anyway we became good friends and uh Anyway, we did that film, and it was quite successful. Went on NBC, and um, so I, the dialogue. I love the Keaton. I mean, the uh, it's funny working with Keaton because there is no dialogue. No, uh, but he's a talkative guy. He go, he'll go on. He's a, always great stuff. You know, it's interesting. So, what do you think of the state of animation today with the 3D graphics, computer graphics? Well I was thinking about heavy metal when you mm -hmm. mentioned, I was thinking we just weren't into uh, computers. That It would probably have been a lot 
a lot more, obviously a much slicker movie, mm -hmm. had we been into computers at that point. In fact, there was one single computer shot in heavy metal, and it was the Pentagon aerial shot of it when we go into one of the stories. Mm -hmm. And um, I don't know, I can't, I can't decide really. I mean, I, lo I loved uh, Ratatouille, mm -hmm. So I met the director of that in Pasadena, um, Brad Bird, very, very bright young Californian guy. Worked Brilliant. on The Simpsons as well. And what? He worked in The Simpsons as well. Did The, the Incredibles. Yeah. He did The Incredibles. Yeah. yeah. The Incredibles. Yeah, he and he that. directed the latest Mission Impossible. He did Wally. Did he no, do Brad Bird? I don't think he did. No. He did Wally. No. no, he did the latest Mission Impossible. Right. With Tom Cruise. But a nice but guy. But is it? Oh, Ratatouille yeah. was so perfect. Even the chefs said that was perfect, you know. They, what did you think of Up? I up? loved it. I, yeah. I, I loved the spectacular with the old guy in the house, very yes. moving. And the, but I got lost when it got to Ecuador, wherever it was. A lot, too much of that big bird dashing around in the jungle, I thought. It became a different movie yes. or something. I don't know. I, I really I loved it. I mean, the whole beginning half of it. Do you think it's a better environment today for young animators than back in the day? Oh no, I don't yeah. think so. No. I don't think um, the computers are it's so... It's turned into a factory. You know? Well it was always a kind of a factory. I mean even when we did, I mean, right. even they did Snow White. Yeah, you when, know, when you sort had of a 80, factory. 90 animators at, at Potterton. Oh yeah, yeah. We, well, we had well, well, we had 150 people at one time when we were doing the uh, the half hour things, you know, the uh, you know the uh, Oscar Wilde things. Now, how many episodes but, of TV did you crank out? Well, there's so many different series that you worked on. Well, the first series I worked on that was for I think was it CBS in London, or where the at the studio where they ended up making Yellow Submarine. Mm -hmm. George Dunning. Canadian chap, George, great guy, and I did a worked on a series called uh, Cool McCool. Mm -hmm. Still, there are Cool McCool fans out there. Now you people. just mentioned Yellow Submarine. Yeah. We, we can't not talk about that. Yeah. How did you end up working on Yellow Submarine? Well, because I guess because I knew George, I'd okay. been working on the Cool McCool thing, and I was over there at that time. That was '68. 67, 68. Well, I'd started my own company, mm -hmm. and um, and I was going backwards and forwards to London at that time, and I'd left the film board by then. Although I did go back to the film board in eighty, mid eighties, I did another little Stephen Leacock film, mm -hmm. and um, I think that uh, George, I had my company with the the bit, the segment we did on Yellow Submarine. Basically, it was very simple. I mean, it was just uh, you know half a dozen scenes, layouts and things, and it was concerned the captain of the submarine and Liverpool. And that's what I remember. And we did that actually in in our studio in Place Bonaventure. Yeah. And um, I think it's very sweet of George to give me a credit. <laughs> Frankly, I mean, yeah, he was a friend. And uh, but anyway, and strange enough, we managed to get it for this local. Film festival up here. I told you about it, and it, it'll be the closing film of the festival because it's a great. I saw it in Salerno, Italy, four years ago at another festival. So, do filmmakers ever retire? Uh, not that I know. Of. No. I think it's fatal. I think it's retiring. Do you have any pet projects that you'd still like to do? Yeah, I'm working on a little on a on a short film now. Aviation inspired film. And, um, and also, we just signed a contract on another thing that's been in the works for 20 years called Peter Biden Cup Airplane. And it's underway now as a <coughs> co production with France and Canada. Gaumont and Muse Entertainment. Mm -hmm. two co-producers and at the moment it's going through the second build-up of a presentation where they will hope will sell I guess in the fall, so four flight 52 but it will be there 11 minutes 
there'll be 26 half hours. So, yeah. my, my last question, because I know you've been patient, you've had a, a long, no, longest fine. interview. Advice for the future generations of young animators and filmmakers from your experience? Well, I think uh, try and do as much stuff as you can on your own. Read as much as you can about the old animation techniques and things. And um, keep drawing, you know, if you're going to, if you like that, draw and, you know, draw and act. All right. Thank you very much, Mr. Potter. You're welcome.